This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. A look at that. I have got one of the tallest animals in the world and this animal is trying to feed from one of the long trees and already the animal has started showing some unusual behavior. For the first time I'm seeing the giraffe breaking some of the branches in order to access the leaves. A very very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the afternoon safari. I am Sydney Pumbulan Mikosi and I am traveling with Dave who is my camera operator this afternoon. We are going to try by all means and give you the best wildlife experience ever. My plan for this afternoon is to look for the spotted cats and don't forget that this is an interactive activity. You can follow us on Twitter hashtag safari live. You can also follow us on YouTube chat stream. So I'm just going to move now a little bit much closer so that we can have a lovely sighting. So this giraffe looks very interesting at the moment as it is displaying some of the unusual behaviors. So he's just walking by himself. I cannot see other giraffes here because mostly giraffes, you find them in a group, a group of giraffes together, it is called a corpse of giraffes. You can also call it a kindergarten of giraffes. Look at that. This is a lovely sighting. So these animals can grow very tall. So the males such as this one can go up to five to six meters. And if you look at the legs, they can grow up to 1.8 meters. And the amazing part is that the legs are the same size as the neck in terms of the length. That is something amazing. So you can see the spots, they are much very dark. The males, they have got dark spots, whereas the females, they've got light spots. But both male and females, when they're getting old, they both dominate dark spots. So when they're old, you must consider the following. You must have to consider the thickness of their horns. So if you look now, this one, by looking at the horns, you can see that this is a male. The horns, they look very much thick. So the females have got thin horns and the females, they've got hairs on top of their horns, whereas the males don't have hairs on top of their horns. In fact, the giraffes doesn't have horns. What we are seeing there, it is something which is called an oxycone. An oxycone is just a bone and a skin. And a horn is something which is consisted of a bone and a keratin. So you can see that this giraffe is getting tired of looking up all the time. So now let's go to David who got one of the largest land mammal. I am here with one of the tallest land mammal. David has got something very interesting by the Maasai Mara at the moment. Hello everyone and welcome to the Maasai Mara Triangle Game Reserve in Kenya. And I'm trying to look at the commonalities or similarities between giraffes and elephants. And I would only say they're both or they're both herbivores and elephants will be both uh, browsers and grazers and giraffes being more of browsers. I don't see any other commonality or similarities between these two animals. A very warm day or a very warm afternoon we have in the Mara and as usual my name remains David and with me on camera today is Manu and a very good afternoon Manu. Afternoon. You're all very welcome and remember always our safari drives are very interactive your questions or your comments are very welcome. As you sure, you can use hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. And we'll always be very happy to answer your questions or share your good comments, like seeing elephants and seeing zebras in the background there. A pretty warm, temp a pretty warm afternoon, as I was saying before. 29 degrees and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. 
But if I, I would say the oldest elephants I know that lived or I know that still live could be about 60 years or 65 years of old. I think that your, was your question. So that's a female just walking across there. And very majestic walking through the savannah. Very good. I think the oldest elephant I have known that I would say is still alive is in a national park in Kenya called Amboseli National Park. And I think she's about 66 years of age, 66 years of age. And the average age or lifespan of elephants is about 65. So going 66 towards 70 is pretty uh, not bad. We have always compared ages of ellies or elephants to that of human beings. To me it feels a bit cold as much as about 29 degrees or 85 degrees Fahrenheit because these elephants would always give us an indication when it's very hot, when they keep flopping their ears. But you notice it's just walking, picking some either leaves or plants on the ground there. Those two are around that tamad mount and being around tamad mine it shows that particular area of that mound it's very healthy you notice the green, the grass is much greener and the same case to this cow and her calf on another tamad mount and if you look carefully the grass is much greener than the rest of the neighboring area because tamads do a pretty good job when they leave. Well, apart from myself and Sydney, there's another gentleman who would like to say hello to all of you. Indeed I would, David, and it's always nice to hear from David up in the Mara. Now you can see that there is a rather macabre image that is about to present itself. There lies a dead Nyala female, I'm afraid. You can see the bite marks to her neck. And so this is a very interesting situation because this Nyala was killed probably in the early part of today. And so you'll see as we come back, it's still very whole. It's down in a drainage line and is very, very close to where Hosanna and Tingana were this morning. My name is Tristan, as David mentioned. On camera, I've got Senzo, and it is a very warm welcome to all of you this afternoon. I hope that you're going to really enjoy your afternoon. It promises to be an epic one, because this kill was made by Tandi. This is not a kill for Tingana and Hosanna. And that tree on the other side of where I am, over there, so that one that's tall over there, that is where Hosanna and Tingana are. So that's where their kill is. They apparently are both still there. Tandi somehow has managed to kill this antelope at some point without the two of them even realizing it and has fed a little bit but she's not here at the moment she's probably lying up somewhere in the shade we'll try and find the two of them now but the two of them apparently after we left because some of the trainees sat here for a while and they followed her all the way around and she walked with Clalamba all the way around back to this kill so <clears throat> unfortunately for her she is going to probably lose this Tingana there's no way at 150 meters or 100 meters from where that tree is that Tingana is not going to find this and his nose is not going to lead him to it or Hosanna for that matter but we have four leopards on two different kills within the space of 150 meters which is absolutely ridiculous it really is a phenomenal kind of situation and not one that you'd really see all that often now you can see that that Nyala is very very fresh <clears throat> so for those of you that are squeamish it's probably a good time to look away but if we go in onto the meat itself you'll notice that the meat is still a very bright red color now we've had a lot of wind over the past few days and that would have dried that out very quickly if it had been an older carcass so that was killed during I think well, Brent reckons that it was during the day today it could have been early hours of this morning before Tingana arrived at that kill and Tandi when she bumped into these two boys was actually coming back towards her kill and just bumped the two boys and that's why maybe Tlalamba ran off but either way it was killed early hours of this morning or even during the course of the day today between the two safaris Kel 6, no. So given that, I mean, if she did kill it after we saw her this morning, well, then the hyenas have all been sleeping. You know, it's the middle of the day. Hyenas don't move around all that much. And they didn't spend time at the carcass where Hosanna and Tingana was because when Ting, uh, Hosanna and Tandi had their little altercation earlier and the, the one hyena that was there ran for its life. It just tucked and ran as far as it could to try and get out of there. I think that hyena is still running when it heard all the growling and hissing and kind of snarling that was going 
going on and two leopards bar barreling down towards it and so it just ran off um, and so no they haven't found it but tonight they will if neither or any of these four leopards doesn't tree this kill then most definitely we're going to find that the hyenas will steal this unfortunately but I'm very surprised from where Tingana was in the tree that he didn't see the kill take place and then come in and actually take it for himself. Now interestingly enough, we've actually got some little white crested helmet shrikes that are bouncing around very close to the carcass and I wonder if they would actually go and feed off any of the insects that could be close to the carcass itself. You don't really often see birds close to a leopard carcass because it's quite a dangerous place to be. They're right above it right now. So you see they are sitting right above where the carcass is, kind of bouncing along <coughs> on the trees. I wonder if they're just hawking little insects that maybe are landing on that carcass itself which is a very cool thing to to see. Not often you actually kind of can hear them, but you can hear that clicking sound. That is them as they sort of forage around this particular area. There we go. Very cool. Right, now on that note, we're going to sit here. We're going to try to see if we can just find a visual of Tandy and Columba because we didn't get to see Columba this morning. And so while we do that, let's send you back across to Sydney, who I think is still with the very tall spotted creature of his own. Uh, look at that, I'm still here with the giraffe and I just heard Tristan was uh, enjoying a lovely sighting with a helmet shrike. Those kind of birds can be very much interesting and there is a very interesting Venda traditional story to do with them. If you see them, it means next week we are going to eat there. So it means it's a sign to eat and drink. So getting back to the giraffe, you can see that this giraffe is now moved to another big tree. Now the giraffe is under one of the marula tree, which is also recovering at the moment. So it's quite very difficult to see the giraffe now because he's using uh, the shade from the very same tree. So he's eating the shade at the same time. <laughs> So this animal was just ruminating while standing there. It was very interesting to see the giraffe taking back food from the mouth. Not a leopard, the giraffes, they do drink water and how they drink is interesting. Yes, they do concentrate on a lot of moisturized leaves, but they drink water. And when they come to the water holes, this is what they're going to do. They go, and they must have to uh, bend the legs, go down and get water. After that, there's a procedure they must have to follow. They must have to shake the neck. When they're shaking the neck is when they're opening the valves. Before they go down for drinking, they must have to make sure that all the valves, they are blocked so that the blood doesn't flow to the brain. Otherwise, if the blood flows to the brain, the giraffe is going to lose the life. So look at that. So this animal has got a very long tongue. <laughs> Rosalind, that tongue has got about seven neck bones which are there in order to support them when they are feeding so they never get tired. And they use again the very same necks for fighting purposes. So in other words, these kind of necks, they are very well adapted to face up and for them in order to strangle the others when they are fighting for uh, the females as well. So look at how that giraffe is walking. You can see that the body is moving swiftly. So that is what the giraffe word means, one who walks swiftly. So this giraffe is just moving very quickly from one tree to the next, which is now uh, giving us a proof that these trees, they have got some substances they are using in order to chase these animals. So now, let's see, the giraffe doesn't have wings to fly, but David by the Masai Mara has got a flying bird on the ground at the moment. Let's see what species got. We just had a few seconds ago of a bird. Let me just find out. First time I'm seeing a Niger. Let me just reverse a little bit. And there's a night jar, which is very difficult that way. Keep going. Forward. We have a night jar here that I've never seen during the day. This will be my first night jar to see 
during the day. Tell me, Manu. Keep going. Keep going. Just hold him for one second. Okay. Okay, let's see where the money is going to put it on the frame. Back up. There's a little bird right there and is a night day which is very difficult to see during the day. You only see them at night. Man, what do you suggest? Back up, move forward. Let me just fall up for a little bit. She's just hiding in that grass. She just jumped up and she landed there. Let me just move forward a little bit and see that. We might like to see her. And she's right there. You see her there? Right there. You see her, Manu? Yes. Ex there. Excellent. Well done. Oops. She just took off. But anyhow, that was a night job that are always very difficult to see. I'm still not giving up for one more view of her. And you only see them at night. Night jars and Yes, and scrub hairs. You rarely see them during the day. But I just think this is a lucky day for me. I don't know what that luck translates into. Okay, maybe. So, okay, maybe. I gotta keep my voice low. Yes. There. Manu, good. Well done, Manu. There she is. And I do not know what night jar this is, but my guess this could be the mountain night jar. I. <laughs> And I don't know whether Project Alpha is watching. Project Alpha will always get me when I get stuck. And one thing I know for a fact, this is a night jar and you only see them at night. They're very nocturnal birds. And you notice how she blends in very well there. I don't want to be very loud. Neither do I want to get my bad book or my pad just to flip the pages to look who she is. I also cannot see her very well. But one thing from the size of her eyes, you can tell she's a night giant. They normally have large eyes. Not sure you can see the beak. They always have some whiskers, which they'll use to catch flies at night. And they always have a very special tool that have something like a brush, because they use that tool. I'm not sure it's on the right leg or the left leg to just groom themselves and just to align or realign their feathers. So if you get a night jar and you watch carefully on one of its toes, it has been modified to something like a brush. And they will only use that tool or brush just to align their feathers. Because if you look at her carefully, she looks very nice. Grace, 100%. I mean, until she jumped up, Grace, I had not seen her. So she blends in perfectly well. And I'll tell you, Grace, she'll be there for the rest of the day and she'll only become more active at night when she goes out to feed on flies or sometimes when you get them on the road or some open areas with the snow grass to warm up. Willow, yes, night jars will always nest on the ground. In general, they do nest on the ground, but sometimes, depending on the particular species of the night jar, you might see them on trees, on branches, and they usually blend in very well. And at times, you might mistake them for part of the tree. So you'd imagine this particular one that we're seeing here on a branch of a tree, or at a branch, you know, at any very, a tree that branches on one side, it will definitely look like part of that tree. In general, they nest on the ground, and I think it's usually much warmer for them. The only guess I would have here for this one is the mountain night jar. Not 100% sure, but I'm just guessing this could be the mountain night jar. Apart from that one feather that doesn't look very kept, if you look at her carefully, everything looks very streamlined. I'm walking back to very many years. Very good. I'll be more than happy, Casty, if you know all of you viewers could just tell me who you think she is. But I've given you the most important clue. James Richards Jumbo, and how are you? And always a pleasure to hear your name. And yeah, it could be a swamp night jar. Very, very good guess. After this, because I don't want to be very loud, I don't want to keep flipping my book, uh, my bat's book, how we look. But yes, James Richard, it could be a possibility. Was saying earlier 
I am trying to walk back to the very many years I saw a night jar during the day and that year is not coming. Man, when is the last time you saw a night jar during the day? Manu is saying the last time he saw a night jar during the day was today. Thank you very much, Manu. Planning in very well there. And she would be there, as I said, maybe the rest of the day and only coming out at night. I'll just try and move forward one meter. If she doesn't fly out fine, if she does, well and good. And see if you will see more of her. Just hold on right there, Manu. I'm going to move forward a little bit. Perfect. Manu says perfect. And look at her. James recharged. Does this help? So you can see the big eye on her. And then look at the whiskers I was talking about. Yes, Casa says this is awesome. And for me, it's pretty good because at night when we see them, we see them, you know, using the infrared. To see them during the day in natural light, I think it's pretty special. So it could be the swamp, Niger, James Richard could be right, could be the mountain, Niger. What conspicuously you can see is the big eye and the whiskers I was talking about, if you look on the beak. So you'll see sometimes at night, very good, Manu, thank you very much. They'll fly opening the mouth. Magic Dragon Wizard, yes, you're right. What we do, we rarely drive off-road, and of course, we are always very careful. And my guess is maybe she could be lying on her eggs. But apart from us, the other challenges Magic Dragon, you know, they, they got through, they'll be like animals like jackals or bat eared foxes or say monitor lizards who will always come, or snakes even, come and feed on their eggs. Yeah, you've got a good point there. We'll always to make we'll always try and make sure we have very minimal impact when we are off-roading. And right now where I am, I'm just on the road and she's just on the side of the grass. And until she flew up, Magic Dragon, I would not have seen her completely. And she just landed there. I think this to me could be a sign of good luck. I might have a great drive today. Manu, do you feel like me? Manu says, oh yes, we might be having a very smashing afternoon on the drive to see a night judge during the day. And this time, apart from the first two times, she jumped up and down. Yes, Cassie, I agree with you. This must be one of uh, my greatest drives because she just laid down there and she's just so cooperative, giving us the best views. Eye open, and you can see it's not like a round eye, and I think that way it makes it easier for her to see at night. It's like overshipped. And at one point I'm going to open my book and have a look at who she is. Hello there. In general you see them, you know, in ones, not in pairs. You'll only see them in pairs when they're mating and after mating is done they go separate ways. And in that position you would not even know there could be a bird right there. Naija, thank you so very much. I'll le let you have some little peace there, just rest. And hopefully this could be a good sign of a great drive for me and Manu this afternoon. Let's see what that might translate into. How exciting. Some of these birds, like the water thickney, night jars, owls, even at night when we see them, they're always on the move. But to see that, like during the day, and she stayed there for us, that was pretty special. And I would really want to thank her. Excellent. Just driving us slowly, trying to... My big plan today is to look for lions. Yesterday I saw the sausage tree pride and I'm hoping I'll be able to see them today. And I, I do that 
I think my other brother is in a tree maybe, James? We live. Uh, right, our radio is not working very well. Hello everybody, good afternoon, welcome to, well, this end of the Sunset Safari. We are on Torchwood, where the radios are not so fly, but we're on Torchwood because, of course, there are some lions here. Brent Leo Smith came looking here with his friend Jamie Patterson, and we're just trying to now relocate where the lions are. They apparently have killed a buffalo, which is very exciting. Well, let's just hope I can actually find them. Uh, just through here. Sorry, the game drive is now very loud in my ear. Um, uh, something else I had to tell you. Oh, yes, of course. Well, you can talk to me like you've been talking to everyone else. Hashtag Spy Live. Chat stream on YouTube. All that stuff. Now, it should be right here. So, have you got them? Sebastian can see them. There are lions. There is a lion. There are lions. Many. There is a buffalo. The buffalo is no longer alive, but very dead. This is very exciting. Marvelous. Let me just get into a position that Thelma, the thermal drone, is not in the way of been killed. I believe the line has just come in though. Sorry. Well, unfortunately it sounds like James has got a few little gremlins there. Hopefully he'll get so it's very exciting. Now we came up towards the Hosanna and Tingana are but one, to show Sydney where it is, and two, to see if Tanya and Kralamba might be hanging around with the two boys. Unfortunately, she's not here, neither is the cub, so it's just Hosanna that's lying here. Tingana's still in the tree. Um, we're going to probably, in all likelihood, just quickly sort of hand this off to Sydney. I was just coming up here in case the two of them might be hanging around with the two boys and almost just trying to kind of distract them somewhat to be able to sort of keep them away from their kill. Oh, bless you. Did you have a big sneeze? He's such a, another story, this. Now, he's so busy sleeping, he hasn't even noticed that there's an impala right here that he could potentially hunt. So just behind me over there is an impala that is really kind of not really in any way knowing that these leopards are here. It's a bit nervous because the wind is blowing so much, but if he actually just lifted his head and looked in that direction, he would spot that there's an impala there. Of course, if he killed it, he would end up not having anything because Tingana is going to steal it. So, you know, I suppose it doesn't really kind of work for them. And I'm 99% sure that Tandy is going to lose a kill to one of these two boys this afternoon or this evening. And for now though, both of them are fairly sort of sleepy and fairly tired and, and are not really doing too much. Like I say, Tingana has spent his entire day up that tree which can't have been comfortable at all he really must have been struggling quite a bit up there um, yeah, I'm sure he's going to be quite stiff when he eventually does come down but like I said we're gonna leave this with Sydney I want to try and see if I can find the two girls and so I'm gonna be driving up and down all over the place to try and see where they have gone and so while I do that and go off and try and find the two girls let's send you back across to David in the Masai Mara he's driving about and say we'll try to get a piece of price. Well, talking of Tandy, talking of predators, I think the night jar might have brought us the good luck or the good omen I was talking about, and we have been or have been fine, been lucky to get the sausage tree pride. This is the sausage tree pride, and this is one of the males in that coalition that roams around the sausage tree pride. Of course, males do not belong to prides, but they belong to a coalition. But before long, Manu is going to show you the females that we saw, or I saw a few seconds ago, flicking their tails under some bush of orange-leafed croton. And when I'm talking about the sausage tree pride, I'm talking about the females. Definitely the males do not form the pride. But now, if you look on the paw of this one gentleman here, or this guy, you can see it's full of flies and blood. That definitely 
sees this a bit of there's a crime scene around and not I'm not sure what time but they brought down a wildebeest I'll be trying to identify who this exactly is right in there and somehow this male is in charge because a few seconds here as I got here one of the females rose up towards the kill and this male just pushed it out and you can see he must have been digging into it we'll be finding out we'll try to get a little bit closer because my signal is a bit iffy now but let's first go across to Sydney as maybe I reposition myself and it'll be better place to keep narrating look at that I have got a very brave impala trying to charge a leopard now decided to run away and she charged that leopard few times and the leopard was just not interested to entertain it so that was a very brave impala she was just alarming and coming closer and charging and decided to run away you can see right next to me I have got a very much relaxed cat this is Hosanna he is not on a mood of hunting as that impala was not that very far away from where Hosanna is at the moment. So he looks very tired. Maybe he's got something in his stomach. I just have to see nicely if he's going to change the position. We might be able to see if the stomach is full or not. Maybe that will be one of the reasons why he did not entertain the impalas much close. So you can see that now he is getting excited. So you can see that he does things at his own time. He doesn't want to be guided by the impala's interest. Now you can see that he is interested on in something. Maybe it's the very same impala or else he have spotted something else. I am very much interested to see what this animal is fascinated by. And I am not alone here by the sighting. I do have some other guest who has just arrived now. Don't get confused when hearing some camera clicks. <laughs> James, the cats, they've got to sleep much of their times because of the following. One, look at what he's doing now. So he's showing you now it has been very much hot and is trying to cool the brain temperature in the head. So these cats, they spend much of their time sleeping because they've got to give their digestive system much time after eating something. But apart from that, Animals such as cats, they are much more active between dawn and dusk. So these animals, when they wake up between uh, dawn and dusk, they must have to be energetic and strong enough for hunting activities. So you can see that if these animals are not relaxing much more during the day, chances of them to catch something during the night, they are going to be very much slim. So you can see that uh, uh, Hosanna is now moving much more deep. Maybe uh, he's just looking for some shade. So I'm just going to reposition now and see if we can have a better sighting from a different angle. So I can see now uh, he is slowly moving down towards the old drainage. So his positioning here, I can see that he is standing while listening to something.
you can see that Hosanna is now pretty very much relaxed and uh, my apologies for the inconvenience is due to the lack of internet earlier. I am still here live with uh, Hosanna. I can see that Hosanna is not doing anything. We are going to have some time with Hosanna. Maybe somewhere around here we might also be lucky with Tingana as we heard earlier that they were all two together in the same area. So I am going to be looking around here to try and see if we cannot find a Tingana. Oh, Dave has spotted him. He's right up in one of the trees there. Oh, that was a nice spot. It's quite very difficult to see. Look at that. He has very much camouflaged. Doesn't look like an animal in there. You can see that the tree is still very green and is very much bushy with quite a lot of branches. So it means now Tingana and Hosanna, they're just all together at the same sighting. This is interesting. So it seems like uh, uh, Tingana is not having something up by the tree there. I'm not seeing anything unless maybe it's hidden because of too much branches. So you can see that Hosanna So you can see that uh, Hosanna is uh, just waiting and every time Hosanna is waiting like this is when there is a kill nearby which has been taken down by him and Tingana arrived to come and take over. Maybe somewhere up by this tree is where the food is hiding. And because of that we are going to have all these cats together. I wanted to see what exactly is happening, but it's not moving at all. So now let's go to uh, Tristan. Maybe Tristan has got something interesting at the moment. I do indeed. We've got something that we haven't seen in a couple of days, but are slowly making their way back. You can see just ahead of me is a small group of buffalo bulls. Now I wonder if these are not buffalo bulls that were potentially chased by the Inkahuma pride all the way from Torchwood to here, because they are just slowly kind of creeping their way along. And we haven't seen any signs of buffalo, but if the Inkahumas have grabbed one, maybe these guys are ones that have kind of run off from that area. But nice kind of sight or big dugger boys that are all together. Um, this is not a herd structure, so as far as I can see the tracks so far just indicate that it's just a few boys together and they are all boys and even though it's you know five or six of them um, you know that still doesn't mean that there's a girls in amongst them so this would be quite a formidable grouping to go after if the Inkumas did bring one down out of this well, they've done a phenomenal effort to be able to do so because these guys are, are big, they are strong, and they are powerful. And the one on the far left is an absolute monster. He's got huge, huge horns compared to all the rest. So there he is. They're straight in there. Zins. Look at the size of that guy's horns. Really big. I mean, that must be probably, I would say, close to a meter from one sort of curl to the other. They are huge horns, and it's so nice to see these guys back again. While it obviously makes kind of bushwalk and those things a little bit more dangerous, it really is nice to have them back around. We've really missed them, and hopefully, their kind of presence in this area is going to mean that the lions are going to spend a lot more time in and around Juma than what they have over the last little bit. Now, you'll notice most of them are grazing at the moment and they will be very excited because in amongst these sort of dry thickets there's actually green grass that is starting to sprout up and so it's very difficult to see but maybe if Senzo comes quite close to the vehicle there's a little patch just on the right hand side here so somewhere in there Sens you'll see that there's this actually some green grass that is coming out between the sort of clump now straight in from there now down a little bit, there we go. So you see the greenery that's in amongst that dry brown grass. Now for buffalo, that is exactly what they're looking for. They really need that kind of green lush new growth and that's from the little bit of rain we've had. That's now starting to come through and that's what they'll be targeting. So the days of browsing and eating dry horrible grass are almost over. They're now going to be able to start eating nice greenery that you see there. So they'll be very happy animals and you'll find they're gonna walk along and just heads down and feed. 
The thing is though, is because this wind is blowing as heavily as it is, all the animals are a little bit on edge. They're all kind of watching and stopping and looking, and it's really kind of difficult conditions for these guys to be able to survive. They unfortunately have got to deal with this wind gusting like this, and it's going to hide the predator's noise when they're moving, as well as their scent. If a predator is downwind from these guys they are going to have absolutely no idea because of how strong this wind is blowing and so it's a predator's dream the kind of conditions that we've got today and it's probably why there's ended up with three different carcasses spread across the area so the lions have got a carcass and then four different leopards on a carcass is because of weather that we're having Rosalind, most definitely, in many recorded cases of buffalo killing lions, it's, it's not something that doesn't happen. Um, I've personally seen two different lions that have been killed by buffalo. Um, the one was an adult female that was completely disemboweled by a buffalo. Its horn got stuck between its legs and he just threw her. And as he threw her, he, just, he kind of ripped through her stomach and, and killed her like that, which was really quite something. So not, not a nice thing to see at all. But yes, buffalo do kill lions. It does happen. Um, you often find old, sick lines do get hurt from time to time and they will get unfortunately kind of maimed by buffalo and also lion cubs so if, if buffalo find the lion cubs hidden they'll trample and kill them so they are very dangerous to lions even if even though lions hunt them regularly there is a lot of danger that is involved when hunting one of these guys you can imagine those horns can do some serious damage if you're on the receiving end of them now You'll see that they're slowly kind of drifting away from us. I think they're going to be heading over the boundary. We're right close near the Buffles Hook boundary. We just came around Hyena Road to try and kind of see if we can find Tundi and Tlalumba. And, and so while we do that, it sends you back up towards David in the Mara. And I think he is with some lions. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't mind being latched onto the back end of these guys as a potential meal. Well, once in a while we have seen sometimes prey fighting back and not once we have seen buffaloes trying to go for the lions which or hyenas which would be chasing them or trying to bring them down. Now, I doubt this would happen to this particular male lion here which shows all the signs of being mighty and strong and you can see how he is panting having eaten not sure how many pounds or kilos of that wildebeest that's not very far from where he is. Now this particular uh, male comes from a coalition of lions that we call the sausage tree for those who are joining us now. There's a particular pride of lions that we call the sausage tree pride and they are males that will be in this particular territory where we are and this is one of those young males. So there's this male and another male but now let's find out if Hosanna could be up to something. Look at that. I have got Hosanna now trying to stalk one of the hyenas who has just arrived in the area and he's so very much camouflaged and he's just flat. The hyena is just in front of him, less than uh, 15 meters away from Hosanna. Anything can happen at any time here now. So you can see that now the hyena is, the hyena has just spotted Hosanna. You can see that the hyena is trying to avoid him now. Look at that. He is still following the hyena. And he can see the hyena from the top of the termite mound. He's very much interested on that hyena. And that hyena is avoiding Hosanna by all means, not even checking what is happening behind. So you can see that now Hosanna is going in between the branches and he is using uh, his spots in order to camouflage. But now the hyena is looking, is looking back and Hosanna has just stopped. When the hyena is moving is when Hosanna is also taking a move. So I'm going to just keep following and see what is going to happen here. So maybe we might be lucky and see them chasing each other. So it seems like Hosanna is building quite a lot of strength now in order to defend uh, himself against these hyenas. So it seems like he gave up now 
because I can see he's just now looking at the hyenas which is now going away. So you can see that uh, now he is uh, just uh, sniffing the ground. That is where that hyena has gone past. So look at that. So it is very much rare to see uh, these kind of cats challenging the hyenas where as there is no food. They are not competing for anything. The food is high up by the tree with a Tingana who is now feeding at the moment. So you can see that this cat is sniffing on the ground and after that is opening the mouth to try and confirm about something. So I'm not too sure what this investigation is all about. So I can hear quite a lot of bones breaking from the tree behind me, which is where Tingana is. What I'm going to do now is that I am going to leave Hosanna and go back so that we can see Hos uh, Tingana who is feeding at the moment. From where I am, I'm just hearing quite a lot of bones crashing from the impala which has been caught by Hosanna earlier on. So it seems like we might have a better sighting where Tingana is. So you can see that these sightings are just very close to each other, not very far. <laughs> because these kind of animals, the the cats, mostly, if you can check, they don't really eat these hyenas. But uh, cannibalism is practiced by some of these animals. But I have never seen a leopard eating a hyena. But sometimes, yes, they can when they are too hungry. So you can see that uh, there is uh, some meat we can see from here, which is much more red, but it's very much difficult to see the actual animal. You can see the same things are happening there. So you can see that some piece of meat they are now falling to the ground. Maybe uh, Hosanna is gonna is gonna get uh, something at the moment so i can see that now uh, hosanna is making his way back and while hosanna is making his way back let's go to the masai mara and see what david is having at the moment seems like david is enjoying something well leopards could do anything at any time and especially when it cools off that will not be the case with the lions and our male here is still looking very snoozy just enjoying the sleep apart from the flies that we see on his front right paw which are happy trying to digest or eat the blood that is left on his paw there but he doesn't seem very concerned by that so I was talking earlier that this coalition or the lionesses around here, we'll call them the sausage tree pride of lions or lionesses. The reason for that, the particular trees in the Mara that we call the sausage trees, those trees are very iconic, just like the thorn trees. And we have followed this pride for, very long, for a very long time. We have always found them going on top of those trees, either to look for some nice shade because sausage trees have very huge leaves and the backs or the tree branches have very smooth backs and when they climb on top of them they are always very comfortable another reason that would make this lionesses like the one you see they are going on top of that tree is to go away from the flies if there's so many flies you know in the grass like for example where she is they will always do that and that's how they got the name the sausage tree pride remember this is a very interactive safari that you know we do both here in kenya in the masai mara triangle and in south africa you're always welcome to ask questions or should you have some nice comments to give you can do that 
using hashtag Safari Live. Alrighty, we now move down again to South Africa to Tristan. Indeed, and you can see little Clalamba is feeding off the carcass with much glee and relish. So where she was just now when we came here, I have absolutely no idea. We couldn't find her at all. Don't know where mom is, can't see her sitting here. I'm sure she's watching from a distance somewhere in the shade, just making sure that this one is safe. The problem is, is with Tingana and Hosanna where they are, they will be attracting hyenas because of the smell of that carcass up on that ridge. As they start to come down, this um, this side, they might move in this way if Hosanna chases them and they might then steal this. So this little one is eating quite a bit. I'm sure Tandy's not far, but I'm hoping that she'll be able to get down and hoist this kill long before hyenas arrive, because otherwise she's going to lose out. But little Tlalumba looks so small in comparison to seeing the boys. I haven't seen her in a while and she's still very little in comparison to, you know, the likes of Hosanna and Tingana. You forget just how small these little females are when they're around the year old. She's got a lot of growing still to do, but look at the size of her tummy. She's eaten a lot. I think these two must have come off a kill already. This morning when we saw Tandi, she was quite full already. She had, didn't look like she had eaten off this carcass. And so I wonder if these two weren't sitting on a kill since the last time Brent saw them. And then they went off and Tandi we saw yesterday afternoon killing that scrub here. And then they made another kill here today. So very cool to see. But the fact that we're sitting within 150 meters of two male leopards, We've got a young female here. Her mother must be somewhere close by as well. Means it's just ridiculous. Four leopards on two different kills in this, like I say, in the space of 100 meters is almost unheard of. And so we are seriously being spoiled on our leopards this afternoon or this morning and this afternoon, should I say, just lately in general, actually. And I'm so excited to catch up with her. I haven't seen her in such a long time. It's really good to kind of see her going about her business and how kind of dwarfed she is by that Nyala is quite funny. Now you'll notice. You can see her mouth is moving quite quickly. So you can see there, she's actually not chewing at the moment as much as she's licking. She might be licking a lot of the blood up. Um, they will consume a blood and they will lick up blood as it contains a lot of water and it allows them then not to have to, well, to not have to go towards things like um, a dam or a pan. She's also probably got herself a good chunk of meat and sometimes you'll find they'll actually, when the carcass is like this, lap up blood that's pooled underneath or in the cavity of this particular animal. So she's really going to town though isn't she that is so cool so glad we've managed to catch up with her and that she's actually here now I just hope the naughty hyenas don't steal from these two because they if it's not hyenas I suppose it is going to be a male leopard they're pretty doomed either way when it comes to this kill the only saving grace that these two have got is that the wind is coming the complete opposite direction to where the boys are so if they were the other side of the boys this scent would be blowing right onto them and I can pr pretty much guarantee that they probably would have lost it by now already but the way the wind is blowing it's blowing from them to um I mean from the boys kind of it's growing across between them so it means that unless they walk in line with this carcass southwards from where they are they probably won't pick up the scent and with the amount of wind that's blowing the noise of her eating is not going to be easily heard at all and so she should be able to get away with it I hope that they'll get away with it but uh, you know knowing Tingana and, and Hosanna both of them have noses unlike um, any other cats and, and will probably in all likelihood pick up that scent and kind of figure it out and move this way we're in for an epic evening either way and uh, you know as that sun starts to sit and that carcass that Tingana's on starts to diminish so we might see a kind of interaction between all four of them as well as hyenas in the mix it's going to be a really kind of special kind of afternoon and so we have to hold on to our seats and see how this all plan pans out it might all just fizzle out into nothing and everyone just stays in their respective places but it could also just be a spectacular kind of afternoon of sort of leopard chaos which would be very very cool but I'm I still can't get over how much smaller she is than what Hosanna is. Hosanna, you know, I forget how he's grown. I remember, you know, last year he was a little boy. Now you kind of, that's just because I just saw him just now, and you compare him to the size of Clalamba, and he really is that much bigger than her. He's, he will dwarf her now, and I mean, he even dwarfs Tandy. You could saw this morning, those of you that were watching and those that weren't, well, basically we had Hosanna and Tandy side by side, and you could really see the size difference already in um, 
in Hosanna and Tandi and so with Klalambe he'll really kind of dwarf her completely but so cool to see this little one she's got so much kind of sass to her I I really thoroughly enjoy her Tandi must be driven mad by this little cub ever since the first time we spent time with this little cub it would just do its own thing and kind of very seldom listen to mom and so I've thoroughly kind of enjoyed her attitude towards life and just her general kind of disposition and her sort of way about herself. She's going to be an interesting female. She's going to be a tricky one in many respects because she doesn't come out all that often. It's very seldom we just find her sitting by herself. She doesn't really like to be seen other than, you know, if mom is around or on a kill like this. So she's going to be a bit tricky when she gets older, especially if she spends time kind of I'm um, hanging around this area. We're going to have our hands full, I think, with her. But I'm hoping that as she kind of goes and grows older and hopefully gets in towards motherhood, she'll calm down a little bit and not be so full of beans as she has been over the last year. At all, uh, theoretically, yes. I mean, she could be, she should be going for liver and, and you know, kidneys and heart and those kind of things. But I, I suppose maybe she's gotten maybe a kidney there already, and she's just kind of eating away around all of that and opening everything up. Um, whatever she's got, she's thoroughly enjoying. So I can't see nicely what it is exactly that she's got. She might even be eating a fetus. You know that, which would be a bit kind of macabre. I know. Um, so you never know what's really inside there. That stomach cavity hasn't really been opened properly. You can see a, a bit of the intestines has been pulled out and a bit of the stomach has been exposed but there's still a lot kind of going on inside there you see she's actually opening the cavity as we speak and so I wouldn't be surprised she she's still getting towards the liver and towards you know the 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 heart and, and all of those kind of internal organs that are so tasty so she'll get there and the problem is is her belly's already full so it's going to take her quite some time before she actually is able to eat much of that meal I mean she's not exactly skinny so she's gonna not be able to eat that much and I doubt Tandy's very skinny either I'm pretty sure Tandy has got a fairly full belly as well um, Brent agreed with me so actually what happened this this, uh, this morning is that we kind of traded with Brent and, and the trainees and they came out and they followed or well, just sat and watched as everything played out in the hope that you know everybody would sort of settle and then managed to follow Tundi down here and find her with this kill so you know between everybody it was a real team effort to be able to find this carcass it was kind of just a a long vigil that took place from when we saw Tandi on, on this morning safari all the way till now somebody has kind of been with these cats which has been quite something to be able to spend that much time and that just goes to show that sometimes it's rewarded if you just kind of put a bit more effort in to be able to see these things so like I say the entire safari live team or guiding team particularly spent time out today to try and kind of keep these sightings for all of us which is which is always good can see she's every now and then because she's got that instinct down pat where every now and then she just stops listens around kind of makes sure that she's not being crept on by crept up on by a male or hyenas or lions or anything like that and that's going to stand her in good stead particularly in conditions like this because it must be very difficult to hear what's going on right well we're going to sit with a little clalamba we're going to figure out where tandy is while we do that though we're going to send you across all the way to the masai mara with david and apparently Apparently he's got some very snoozy sausages who I'm sure are replicating Tandy. He was having the leopard there with this Tristan which is much more active than my lioness here which is just flicking you know her ear and not doing much. Very typical for lionesses or lions just to sleep and see both of them there are just flat out sleeping just like the male and this explains what I've always said that it's not only the males people have said you know like when you say kings of the jungle and males because they sleep for so very many hours but for me it's both males and females now this particular pride or the male around here they got a kill here of a wildebeest that they have hidden very well in that particular bush that you see there if you look in that slight opening there's something dark on the inner side and this bush is what you call the orange leaf croton. There's a wildebeest there. That's the kill I'm sure could have been, you know, they brought one down during midday. 
Now, there's something very special about this particular bush that we call the orange leaf croton. The leaves and those green leaves you see there, they do not attract any flies. And lions, I think, time immemorial have known, any time they'll bring a kill there, any time they will lay down there, they are guaranteed not to be disturbed by those irritating flies like, you know, the sister flies or the big ones or the mosquitoes and any flies that will come to them will be not of much concern. So you see the male is not very far from that bush, just like the females, and just laying on top of that rock. And I'm sure he's getting a bit of warmth from the rock he's laying on. Remember, this is a very interactive safari. Should you have any questions or comments, like saying, wow, how nice to have him just sleeping there, please send them through. John, I would say lions have the largest canines. Lions have the largest canines. If you compare to all the big cats that we have, of course, we've got leopards. We also got jaguars and we got tigers, tigers which are much bigger than lions as much as we don't have any tigers in Africa. But I would say tigers, if you look outside Africa, would have the largest canines. But looking at the cats that we have in Africa, I would say the largest. And they will need them because they need to subdue when they bring just choking them or chokehold when they suffocate them before they start, you know, eating them. You can see him just panting there. Got a bit of sun now on his body. Sorry about that crash cut, everybody. We do seem to have some signal issues. Well, these are not the Nkuhuma pride, as you can see. They, that is Hosanna. Uh, he is, of course, below Tingana, which you all knew. And I have taken over the sighting from Sydney because Sydney is going to go to the Lions and see if he can't find some signal there with Wendy. Uh, if he can't, he'll probably come back here then. Uh, we do, of course, have our SABC3 show coming up at 6.30 this evening. 6.30... Uh, that is Central African time, and we will be live, all four of us, from here. Whoops. And <laughs> so Sebastian says, sorry about that. Uh, and so we need to try and maximize what we have. Tristan's obviously very stable with um, Tandi and Tlalamba. We're sitting here with the two males, and it would be great if we could have those lions. But I have hey me doots that even Sydney and Wendy will be able to get signal at the lion but he will be there probably in the next 20 minutes or so, and we'll keep you posted. Quite a remarkable day has been had by all here. I don't know if Tristan told you, I think he did, but the, the trainees were sitting here all day babysitting the leopards, which was great for them and for us. And quite astoundingly, you know, they've, they've arrived here pretty... Well, I mean, they've got some bush experience, they've got lots of biology behind them, but they've driven in here and they're, suddenly they've got four leopards within about, oh, I don't know, an acre of each other. Quite astounding. It's a pretty good turnout. Dos Santos, I think that Tingana allows Hosanna to remain because he's his son. Now, obviously that's not a particularly detailed answer. What I mean by that is that he doesn't feel a threat from Hosanna. That's one of the reasons. The other reason, of course, is that Hosanna is a young male and is not showing too much in the way of territorial behavior. He is doing that sort of marking behavior, or what people have called marking, he hasn't called yet. He's still a bit young for that, obviously. But, you know, I think that marking behavior, that spraying of bushes, inaccurate as it often is, is just part of growing up. It's, you know, it's like I'm trying to think of an equivalent human example. When a boy hits puberty and starts to become a man, he does some things that men might do. You know, he tries to shave and cuts himself. He... um 
Uh, what else can I say that a, ma a boy does that a man will do a lot more of? He becomes slightly more aggressive. You know, he tries to test himself against uh, other boys as his testosterone levels raise. But he's not really being a man. He's just kind of learning or feeling the first flushes of being a man. And I think it's very similar here. Horsana's obviously got the hormones of adolescence now coursing through his body. And so, well, some instinct, sometimes he, he feels the need to spray on the bush. I'm not sure he really understands why he's spraying on a bush yet. I don't think he's necessarily trying to mark territory. So that's what I think's going on there. But the other thing about relatedness here, and I don't think that this is conscious at all, I think it's entirely unconscious, but even if Hosanna was to mate with a leopardess in his father's territory, his father would still be passing on his genes indirectly. And that's why there is this tolerance amongst related animals that may be, especially male animals, that may otherwise be in conflict. So that's my answer, Dos Santos. It might be entirely rubbish. It's all based entirely on conjecture and a bit of reading, but mainly conjecture. Tristan is just across this rather deep river. Indeed I am. I know exactly where James is. I saw him just now, um, briefly through the thickets, and I can't really see him anymore, but you can see now that Tandi has come in instead of Tlalamba. She Tlalamba moved off a little bit, not far, and then Tandi came and took her place and is now tucking into feed. But when I was saying earlier that she's got a full belly, you can see it qu quite clearly now. If you look at the size of that tummy in comparison to you know, how much has actually been eaten, they've definitely come off a really decent meal in the last little bit. What have you seen, girl? I'm sure she's very nervous of the boys arriving in this area. Now, Senzo, can you come to the tree right next to us? Because while there is a leopard there, there's also a very cool little lizard that's cruising right next to us. It's very, very close. There it is. It looks like a little bush felt lizard that we've got. And straight in, straight in, straight in, straight in. There it is in the middle, over there, slightly up a bit. There we go, straight. There we go. You can see the camouflage that these little guys have got. Isn't that cool? So you often find them, these particular ones, moving around in areas like this where they're able to go up onto small trees like a tamburti tree and they can kind of camouflage and go into the cracks underneath the bark and hide out there. But very cool to see. I know there's a leopard around, but sometimes you've got to look at the smaller things that are around you too. It's always nice to have kind of up-close views of lizards because generally we see them from so far that we don't really get to see much about them. And it's always good when there's one that is very close, and I mean that is as close as you could ever get towards a lizard on a vehicle. I mean, it's probably less than a meter from where I'm sitting right now. And there it goes off the, up the tree. I'm pretty sure it's going to go and try and find a little hideout spot to stay nice and safe. Yes, be careful. There's two lizards around, in I mean, two le leopards around, and particularly Clalumbo, who will chase little lizards. I'm pretty sure she does all the time and has probably, unfortunately, taken quite a few of these guys. Anyway, Tani's still feeding. She's still quite alert at the moment. I'm hoping... Yes, it does look like a bit of its tail was kind of all disappeared or it's just got a bit of a new tail that's grown after it lost it. They often find that certain lizards do lose their tails as part of their defense mechanism. So the tail drops off and stays wiggling and it allows them to move off while the predator is preoccupied with a wiggly tail. Now, Tandy won't have that ability. So in something like Aina arrives today, she's not going to be able to do that. Instead, she's going to have to use all her strength to try and drag it up a tree. And I honestly don't see any really nice trees for her that are going to be easily climbable and easy for her to put this carcass. I'm, I'm very surprised to see that she hasn't dragged it to a bit of a different spot where maybe it's a little bit more hidden or you know out of the way but for now she's kind of there's a lot of trees around you might be thinking I'm absolutely mad because you can see trees all over the place but they're all straight stem tamburtis with very few nice comfortable V's for this carcass to actually hang and so I would be very surprised if she's sort of picked any of these they're not ideal trees for her to hang there might actually be one towards the back end that she might be able to get into but you see look she look at how she's kind of licking in the sort of bottom part of that carcass 
So not only will she be getting a bit of meat, but she's also licking up all that pooling blood that's settling in that area. And like I said before, if you're a little squeamish, it's probably not the best time to look. You know, leopards when they feed, particularly on a new carcass like this, you can often see a lot of kind of blood coming out of the carcass as well as, you know, a lot of the internal organs. But well done, girl. How you have managed this, I'm not quite sure. She's somehow managed to bring this down without the attention of both the boys. Crystal depends. I mean, I've seen aggressive males and aggressive females. I, I, I must be honest, more aggressive females than males, but it depends on their upbringing and where they come from and their experiences. Um, females obviously have a lot more to lose than a male leopard in terms of, you know, male can often just run away and, and move off, whereas a female leopard, she's often got cubs, which means that she's got to be able to try and kind of look after those cubs, and, and that causes her to be a lot more kind of defensive of her area and make sure that she is um, constantly on the, the sort of offensive if she's trying to de defend those cubs and try and keep their, you know, whatever predator is at bay. Now, Senzo says he can spot the little baby. Oh, the fetus is in there. There we go. So, that's exactly what Senzo is trying to say. Now, I was looking at the thing. I was saying that this Nyala might be pregnant. And I'm sorry if you are now screamish. You nearly need to look away now because that is a little baby Nyala that hasn't been born and is quite well developed. It's already got its stripes. And that's what she's busy pulling out. And I said it earlier that it looked like that stomach was very big. And... I'm afraid there is a little baby now, and now it's always very, very sad to see these things. As much as it's great for our leopards to feed, it's it's very, very kind of difficult when you have to watch them feed off little unborn um, animals. It's it's never a very pleasant thing at all. And you know, it's it's unfortunately part of life, and we're going to see a lot of it over the next couple months. You know, as the impalas and nyalas and many of the animals gear up to have their babies in time for summer so you sort of start to kind of see these sights and I believe a lot of you are saying oh no I know it's not very pleasant at all it's not something that any of us really like to look at um, especially a, a little baby as well formed as that you know that is kind of got fur it's got its stripes already so uh, never nice at all but it is nature and it is the way things can go and yes because she can hoist that I would imagine it would be quite interesting to see if little Clalumba tries to hoist that it would be maybe a good learning sort of curve for her to be able to hoist that little Nyala fetus up now I wonder maybe this Nyala was actually prepping to give birth because that little fetus is very well formed it is big 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 and I wonder if maybe that's why this Nyala was in here, if she was ready to kind of give birth and be able to, you know, and maybe that's why she was on her own and, and Tandi was able to find her kind of in this little gully. Because I doubt that Tandi dragged this carcass too much. It, it doesn't look like it was dragged very far at all. And so, shame. Yeah, it's always tough, like I say. It's never nice to see a tiny little baby animal like that. But it is nature, like I say, and it is part and parcel of life out here as, as, you know, it's one of those things that unfortunately does happen. Right, now, while we sit here and watch this rather sort of dark scene unfold, let's send you back across to David up in the Mara, who's got a lot more of a happy moment as he sits with the sausage she pride as they rest in the beautiful, beautiful Masai Mara. Well, it's very true, Tristan. Uh, what would happen, oh, why I respect the wilderness. Animals will always kill for a purpose, they'll always kill to feed themselves, and for that reason, that's how nature is meant to be. In the meantime, I am just enjoying the sunset, or the sun going down, because my lions are still very flat, but I'm sure as it cools off, they're going to wake up, they rise and shine, but in the meantime, just watch that sunset, and how beautiful to see sunset in the savannah or in the Mara Triangle. In the backgrounds there, you see that escarpment, and that is the escarpment that forms one of the arms of the Mara Triangle, for those of us who have, are joining us now or who have never been with us before. 
So the famous Massimara game, a triangle has three arms. That's one of it, the oil escarpment. And then there's another arm, that's the boundary between Kenya and Tanzania. And the other arm of the triangle is the Mara River, which many wildebeest will be crossing or have been crossing for the last few weeks or months during the migration. How beautiful is that sun as it goes down? Just watch it for a couple of seconds with all the beautiful colors in the world that you'd think of. Very good. And yeah, casting the final control says that is just amazing. Think of any nice color in your life. Yellow, peach, black, white, orange, bit of blue, black, or the colors as human beings would love. But slowly and surely, sun has given us a very good sunset here in the Mara Triangle. Some clouds hanging up there, definitely an indication of no rain. The last few days we've been having rains almost every afternoon. We have gone to the onset of the short trains in Kenya. Very good job, Manu. How peaceful is that? Well, I've been thinking about the night jaw we saw earlier and James Richard, I know you, you are an expert. Yes, number two. And I'm looking at, how, how good is that, Manu? Is that good to make the, the dashboard? Is that okay? okay? Very good. I've been you know, debating of the night jaw we saw earlier and I've been flipping through the pages, oops, sorry about that, of my book. And I looked also at the Swamp Night Jar from James Richard. And looking carefully, the distribution did not show it to be where we are in the Maasai Mara. So in the meantime, not 100% sure. I'm settling on the Dusky Night Jar, but of course we can debate on that one a little further. Alrighty. Where are the lions, Manu? Are they still there? Sorry about that. Yeah, still sleepy and i just found out we got three in total here not very close to where we are we got the 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 oldest female in this group that's called the king tail and we shall be seeing it much later but let's move for the lions in the mara triangle to other lions in south africa So you can see that I've got a great sighting. At the moment, I have got the Unkuhumas, and these Unkuhumas are not just alone. They are together with one of the avocas. They are feeding on a buffalo at the moment. So I think a buffalo is a very good size animal for this kind of a group to feed on. So you can see we've got one beautiful male there. So his head is just in the buffalo. So everything still looks fresh, but it seems like these animals are too fast to take to finish this buffalo. So there's quite a lot of growling at the moment. So there's quite a lot of uh, uh, intraspecific competition, a competition which involves the same kind of species. I listen to that. So this male is growling all the time. So you can see that this one a female with some kind of a mange. So that kind of a female doesn't really belong to this pride. So it's one of those two um, females who are trying to force themselves to the pride. So this is something very rare because normally a pride of the lions, the membership doesn't change. It only changes when there's a death or when there's a born of a cub. But here we can see that there is some other uh, females that are coming from outside. But it seems like these females are not really welcomed because every time they try to avoid them.
<laughs> Ruby, look at that. So his mane is looking very, very, very big and is looking very nice. But you can see that he is much powerful and what he's doing now is what excites these females the most when it comes to the mating activities. So just one charge, all the females backed off. Look at that. This is quite a very beautiful male. So they're trying to get some piece of meat in between the ribs. So you can see these two are charging each other. There's quite a lot of wind, but I can hear the animal growling. <laughs> this is quite a lovely sound. If you look at what that male is doing now, he is licking these ribs. So the tongue of these male lions are so very much, the tongues of the cats specifically, they are very much coarse, so they can be able to scrape out some meat just by licking the ribs. So look at that one. So I think there is still uh, quite a... Um, a lot of meat. So you can see that the one that is feeding on the left looks like a, a, a female and there is a very big male much more on the right. So one of the mange, it is part of the Mangeni pride. So the second one, I'm not seeing it here. That is the only one I'm seeing, but I'm sure the second one is here. As I saw them a few days ago, they were all together. So I can see there's quite a lot of dragging at the moment and the Unkuhumas are not feeding at the moment. So now uh, let's go to uh, James who's got Tingana who is also having something to eat. Although Tingana did not catch is something for Hosanna. Well he's dropped a little piece of something for poor little Hosanna who is now eating what looks to be the uh, what's the radius and ulna of a, an impala. That's all he's got. So you can imagine not a lot of flesh on the foreleg of an impala cow, or you, sorry, impala you. I think that's what he dropped. And Hosanna, the, well, should we say ever patient? I suppose he is very patient, you know. He's very good-natured most of the time. So the ever-patient Hosanna has now got a little bit of Sunday tea. Not much, though. Not enough. And obviously some of it he doesn't really like. He's trying to spit it out. How Tingana has managed to sit up in that beastly uncomfortable tree all day long, stuffing his belly, which must be beastly full right now, I just don't know. I think it's very impressive. Sorry, I went silent there briefly because Brentlia Smith just came over the Game Drive radio asking if there is a child on Game Drive who had lost a Batman mask, which was not something you hear every day, certainly. I now have a picture of Brentlia Smith wearing a Batman mask in my mind. Well, there is Tingana. You can actually see him. He doesn't look uncomfortable at all. He has eaten a huge amount in the last little while. Killed an impala on his own. Ate it all. Stole this impala from Horsana when it was, well, I don't know, about six hours old. Hosanna's now looking like he might try and climb up, but I don't think he will. 
Aidan, only in very extreme circumstances could a leopard hurt its tooth biting a bone. They are very, very strong teeth, Aidan. And you'll find that unless there is some kind of disease or crack in the tooth, then it's very unlikely that they will break. But when they get older, when they're about the same age as Tingana, who's now well, almost 13, you'll find that the teeth become blunter but seldom do they break. You do find cats with broken teeth, and that's normally, look at Hosanna here. That's normally because the tooth that's broken got a disease, the nerve died or something like that, uh, became infected, and that then made it weaker, and that's why they break. But their teeth are very, very strong, even stronger than ours. And you know how hard your teeth are, Aiden. He's looking so longingly up towards his dad. Every time his dad notices him, he starts to growl. Sorry, young fellow. So much of your hard work has come to feed your father. That's okay. You can do the same one day when you're a daddy. Almost like he's thinking about going up the tree. I don't believe he'll dare to go up, though. Begging. Like he's begging, says Sebastian. Yeah, he does rather look like he's begging, I have to agree. Sniffing around, maybe there's another morsel that's dropped. If you just work out, the Tandi is across the way, really not far from here, 200 meters or so, maybe 100 meters. Nyala, well, I think he'd be in business. Yes, well, this little fellow's going to have a scratch and then I suspect a snooze. Let's head across to his potential thieving station. Well, it is a potential, I suppose, thieving station. There's lots going on around this area, and you can see little Clalambas up on the bank at the moment, just watching out and around, and pretty much looking in the direction of where James is with Tingana and Hosanna. I mean, they're quite a far way away. I suppose about 100 meters from where she is. Mom is behind her somewhere there. It's just kind of, you can see she twists her head every now and then to where Mom is. Mom is up on the termite mound, probably using the termite mound as a very good vantage point because for two reasons. She can once she can see Tingana up in the tree, Second reason is she'll be able to spot anything that really comes towards her kill. Her kill will be down below her in the sort of drainage section and it will allow her to be able to actually really see what's going on and, uh, and keep a close eye on not only the kill but Clalamba as well as any other potential predators that could be moving into the area that could be dangerous for both her own safety as well as her cub's safety. So even though she's provided a meal it's still a lot of danger that she has around her and she's going to have to be very aware of what's going on but doesn't Lalamba look like a little princess sitting like that she I know it doesn't look like Shungile, but she reminds me of Shungile at this age for some reason. I don't know why it is. Just that pose that she's got at the moment. It was very much like how Shungile was when she was kind of just before she disappeared. It had a very similar kind of way of sitting on termite mounds and sort of looking around and being quite sort of stately about it. Now, I believe some of you have been asking why we sort of stay with sightings like what we just had with that Nyala and, and you know, the fetus and being eaten. And... I mean, I will try and answer it from my point of view. This is in no way the kind of view of everybody, but from my point of view as to why we sit with these kind of things, and I hope that I'm not insensitive to anyone, but essentially the reason that we're out here is to try and basically give everybody a glimpse into the lives of animals that is a very short glimpse. I mean, we get only six hours of a 24-hour period, so for 18 hours a day, these animals are pretty much doing whatever they need to be doing. And so that percentage of time that we spend with them is so small that when things happen, we try and spend time with it not only to to watch what the process is and for all of you at home to be able to learn but also to be able to try and kind of 
learn from what the animals do themselves and to get to know these animals and how they go about living in their world. Now sometimes it's going to be epic, happy, cute moments like the first time we met Klalamba. Other times it's going to be very sort of intense moments like this morning with Hosanna and Tandi and that confrontation that they kind of had. And then other times it's going to be sad and, and difficult to watch like what we've just seen now. Now all of those kind of things combine in together to make nature nature and it's a reason why everybody that watches this I, I hope everybody that watches this is brought in by that they're fascinated by the natural world and, and the natural world has epic beautiful moments it also has very difficult macabre moments and those two merge at times into areas and while kind of going and watching some of them it's it's for me a little bit naive to turn a blind eye to things that are difficult to watch because it is still the animal's life it is still the way these animals interact with their environment and we spend lots and lots of time trying to kind of spend time with these animals so that we can all learn from it and myself included um every other guide here is probably the same is that we you know we like to try and spend as much time as we can with certain animals with all animals i suppose and try and kind of learn about nature whether it's hard to watch or not it's it's sometimes just the way it is and you know it, it's a reason why we'll often kind of say to people that it's it's a bit dissensitive and, and to rather turn away um the, the feeding off of a carcass and particularly one that f features a little fetus is is never easy to watch but it is also very educational it's it, in many respects it shows you how a leopard goes about feeding um, what organs it will start to go for how muscle structure is broken down on that animal what the techniques are in order to be able to stop it being stolen from them like Tandy just now she scraped a whole bunch of soil and, and debris over the top of that carcass after she finished eating in order to try and just cover that scent up a little bit and those are things that we would never really know if we didn't sit through the ugly parts and so as much as it's difficult and I know a lot of you kind of express that difficulty I, I hear you and I understand it and I and I am sympathetic towards where you're coming from but for me the magic of what Safari Live is is that the magic of what Safari Live is is for everybody to experience everything out here and whether you're somebody that doesn't like it um, then like I say we try and give as much of a warning as we can that people can then look away during those periods whereas there are people out there that would be interested in that process and that whole kind of change of, uh, of and, and process of that animal being broken down whether it be by leopard hyena um, vultures whatever it may be and and there are a lot of animals that die out here it's, it's only the way it has to be before all of these predators to survive and for us to have a magic moment of Klalamba and Tandi playing it's required energy to have gone into a kill and for them to have fed on it and so that process of watching all of that is just part and parcel of their life and and like I say I don't mean to sound insensitive to those of you that do kind of have a little bit of a sort of standoff or not standoff but a, a sort of a hesitance to watch something like that it's by all means your own choice i'm just trying to put it in from my point of view as to why we sit with animals on carcasses and why we watch it and i know this afternoon has been a pretty macabre afternoon in many respects we've got three different sightings or four different sightings i suppose of animals being being fed upon and and it is difficult to watch and, and 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 you know a lot of you will think that as guides that we'll sometimes sit here and be you know you know a lot of you will think that us as guides are stone-hearted when it comes to these kind of things seeing a little baby nyala like that is never pleasant it's not something that i go out and thrill to see it's it's just part of what my job is and being able to show you guys the raw part about it is is what makes like i say this so special now Kirst, if you can just repeat the name for me sorry i just got the dream part i didn't get the the first part of it so tears from a dream you say this is all about nature and this is kind of the raw part about it and it is sometimes difficult to watch and, and difficult to process but like i say that's what for me makes this particular sort of job that i do and this program that we're part of that you guys are able to watch so special is that we'll be able to kind of show you guys pretty much everything that goes out here whether like i say it's a, a roller trying to swallow a frog or you know a leopard eating an unborn fetus it's it kind of all fits in at some point and and it's something that we all kind of uh, you know I, like i say i understand where people come from but i'm just trying to give it from my side and as to why we kind of do it now columbus moved off so let's get on to happier things let's try and sort of worm our way 
through to see where exactly these two have gone. And while I do that, let's send you back across to Sydney, who's still with those lions. So you can see that I'm still here with the lions. Now these lions are divided into many groups. There's two males, one avuka male and one mangeni uh, from the mangeni pride. They are feeding on a buffalo carcass and the rest of the unkuhumas are much more heading towards Chitwa Chitwa. And with me here is one of the young males, I think, who is also slowly moving, following the others. But he's got quite a lot of interest to join the other males behind. What I'm going to do now is that I am going to leave this male here and carry on down to try and see what the Unkuhuma females are looking for. They are heading much more down towards the Chitwa Chitwa area. Let's do that. So they are not walking very fast. They are walking very, very slow. I will find them right somewhere in front here. So maybe now it's time for them to have something to drink. <laughs> Sandy, uh, maybe else they, they had enough because when I was looking at the stomachs, I could see that these females, they, they really had a lot to eat. You will see when I come across them again. Maybe that was one of the challenges. So I'm not too sure who got there first, but maybe the females were there before the males because this is Unkuhuma uh, pride. So now let's go to Egypt. So now let's... Now, I believe that earlier on today, a hyena did come into this area and Hosanna chased it away. It's quite interesting. He or she appears to have returned and is behind the thicket. Now we've driven into this area because we thought we might get a slightly better view of the two cats, which we have got. Here comes the hyena now. There we are. Let us watch how this plays out. Because of that, Scavenger tries to take something that horse here. Here comes Hosanna. Hosanna's up and stalking, stretching first. But if the hyena tries to take something that falls, which Hosanna could have, there will be trouble. Go on, Hosanna, don't stand for this. Don't put up with this. Go on. Here we go. Let's see what he does again. Every time the hyena turns its back, Hosanna gets up and prepares to charge. The hyena hasn't looked towards him at all. There, no. Here we go. <laughs> Well done, Hosanna. But you see how he got there and then didn't really know what to do. So he had a bit of a hiss and then the hyena moved off. But it's not like he charged in and started swatting at him with his claws. If the hyena had pushed back, I suspect Hosanna may have climbed up the tree. Then he would have had to deal with his father. I can hear... No, he's... Going to chase the hyena, I think. I think we're going to move. I'm just going to take me a couple of minutes to get out of here. I can see him. He, he's chased across the road. I can still see him there. He's on a termite mound. He's running now. Oh, gosh. Sorry, everybody. This really is a rather nasty patch of ground to be in. Careful, Sebastian. You can see the hyena running. They're kind of running around the termite mound trying to avoid each other. We're going to try and avoid being, well, wasted upon by Tingana. We're right underneath him now. Hyena's back. Hosanna's still stalking him. There's Hosanna. Still stalking the hyena. This hyena now knows he's being stalked. There he is, you can see him moving there. Just a little flicker of spots. Here he comes, out the other side. Hyena's skulking off down the road. I 
Maybe he's hoping his father will thank him for chasing away the scavenger. Osana's well, now moving into the cover of the bush on the side of the road. Well, Ray, I think he's more than daddy's food god. I think he's daddy's food provider and now god. Now that hyena could inadvertently be chased straight onto Tundi's kill. I think let's follow him, Seb, just in case he disappears into the gully here. That's very nice. Interesting to see. On this chilly, chilly afternoon. Osana, what are you doing? Please don't go that way because if you go crossing this riverbed towards Tundi, it's going to be very difficult to follow you. He's on the game path, still stalking. He's got very bored waiting for his food. I wonder what he's seen down there. The hyena went off to his right hand side. That lovely picture there. I always think it's situations like this that a male leopard or any leopard actually, is just so, I don't know, there's something incongruous about them in this environment. They're just, almost look like they don't fit. They're so magical. He's still heading down towards the riverbed. He's just tripped. Now you can see James was right near that hyena and it just gives you an idea of how close that carcass is to where we are. This hyena's found this carcass and I'm afraid Tandy was bound to lose it to one or the other. Now I'm wondering if she's going to come in and try and stop this because Clalamba is not far. She's about, I would say, 10 meters behind that bush there, just watching over in the most gorgeous afternoon light. Look at that. She's very pretty. And then Tandy's a little bit further away and I wouldn't be surprised if Tandy comes flying in here to try and kind of see if she can get this carcass away but in the end it's probably too heavy for her to hoist anyway and so she's going to have to just watch as this hyena tears into this and basically just eats it you know how hyenas can be they will just devour all of this and they will get really a lot of it down it's unbelievable kind of how much they can fit in now this particular hyena has got a bit of a belly on it already and so its tolerance for the amount of flesh it can actually pop into its stomach will be quite interesting. I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be able to take as much as it normally would, but it's going to be interesting to see how much is left. I wouldn't be surprised the hyenas have a full go here, eat, and once it's finished, that you find Tundi coming in and trying to just take whatever the leftovers are. Now, Clalumba's laid down. I can't see where Tundi is. I haven't seen her lurking at all. I'm hoping she will arrive too because otherwise she's going to have lost this I'm afraid and you can see Columbus looking utterly unimpressed by all of this as why is this kind of carcass been sitting now Francis you say what a drive it's chaos it's absolute sort of chaos we've got lions that are all over the show who know who knows what's going on with them at the moment that are all interacting we've got two male leopards on a kill we've got two female leopards on a kill and now a hyena that's kind of interacted on both leopard kills here comes Hosanna here's Hosanna so Hosanna's found this carcass and look at him he's going to try and edge forward now it's going to be interesting to see Columbus run away she immediately ran out of the way this is ridiculous. Now, we're going to hold off speaking because I'm going to try and take this to a wider audience as soon as we can. Now, I wonder if Tandy's going to come in. Right, now 
Now, welcome to South Africa. It is an epic start to our afternoon, well, to our evening, should I say. As you can see, there's a tug of war between a hyena and a leopard. So what's happened here is a female leopard killed a nyala, and her, her and her cub have been feeding during the afternoon. But not more than 150 meters away was two male leopards that also had a kill. And one of the male leopards has run in here with the hyena, and they've stolen this kill. And they are now having a tug of war between the two of them. This is absolutely insane. Now I wonder if the female is going to come back this way or are we going to see maybe the other male also arriving here because the other male is a much bigger male than this one. This young male is called Hosanna and the bigger male is Tingana who's his dad and he might arrive with the noise of these two feeding and fighting you might find that that other male comes in but look at how the hyena is still eating even though the leopard is trying to drag it away from it and the hyena is going to use all of its power and strength to be able to try and kind of break this open and, and pull this and try and get as much out of this carcass as possible. Now it really is quite amazing to see these two predators going at a tug of war between them. Now the male leopard is going to try and grab as much as he can and try and maybe get it up into a tree. So even if it's a chunk or a piece of it, he's going to try and get as much as he can up there or he's going to sit and just feed right next to this hyena. This is absolutely ridiculous. How amazing is that? Now this is just insane. We have four leopards and hyena all in the same place. And I wonder where the other two leopards have run off to. I wonder if maybe mom has gotten a fright and her and her cub have shot off and gone in a different direction. It wouldn't surprise me at all. They ran off sort of up north away from us. And so I wouldn't be surprised if the two of them are trying to get out of here as quick as possible. With hyenas and other leopards around, a mom will always be very, very careful of her cub and will try and kind of separate them. But just listen to the noise of these guys actually feeding. I don't know if you can hear it. The hyena's jaws are so powerful. It's just breaking open that rib cage and trying to get into where the flesh is. And you can see why they can make short work, but look at how close that leopard's face is to the hyena. Isn't this insane? This is absolutely ridiculous. Now this is not something you're going to see every day. We've been absolutely spoiled by seeing this. Now it is a reminder that you can ask questions and you can post any comments. You can just do that in the comment section below. I also haven't introduced myself. My name is Tristan and on camera I've got Senzo this afternoon and it's a very warm welcome and I hope that you're going to enjoy this. is an insane amount of action that is taking place. It's very 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 cool to kind of see what's going on. Now I am very surprised if the other big male doesn't arrive here. I'll be shocked if he doesn't and the reason why is the other big male was finishing up the kill that he had and so he'll hear this crunching he'll hear this interaction and I will just keep an eye and a sort of head on a swivel just in case he comes flying out of the bush and arrives at this particular carcass and we see him also interacting because if he runs in I wouldn't be surprised that the hyena and this leopard runs away immediately I'm just listening because I can th hear some alarm calls. I wonder if he's on his way. So, M. Ruth, the reason why Hosanna is not attacking the hyena is because the hyena is still dangerous to him. A bite from one of those, well, from a hyena's jaws could very well latch onto his paw and could break bones in his paw. Remember, their, bow, their mouth structure is hugely powerful. I mean, you can see how this hyena is ripping into this carcass and taking off big chunks and breaking bone. And that means that Hosanna has got to be a bit careful of that. He doesn't want to get himself injured. Much easier for him to be able to find another meal than it is to be able to try and interact with something like a hyena so he's really got to be very careful about that and that's why he's just going to try and kind of feed next to it and what's eventually going to happen is that hyena is going to get full and might just leave a piece or they're going to have a tug of war and the carcass is going to break and Hosanna is going to end up with one section and the hyena is going to end up with the other section but they're both in a race to try and eat as much as possible unfortunately for Hosanna hyena has got a better ability to be able to just swallow massive chunks of meat but this is insane it's amazing Amazing how quickly a hyena goes through a carcass. It astounds me when they do this. Look at that. They 
they are almost nose to nose. Tingana's coming now. The big male's here. So the big male leopard has also come in. Here we go. Now this is going to be very... There we go. You see? You see? Now look. There we go. He definitely is going to be the boss. You can see how Hosanna ran away straight away. The hyena is gone. And now look at him. Taking it up. Now the hyena is coming back as well. He's going to try and get it. This is just insane. Now the hyena's grabbed the fetus from this baby. Well, baby Nyala that was inside the mother. There goes the hyena. Hosanna unfortunately has lost out, but Tingana has got it up in a tree. Here's Tandi. Now there's the third leopard. Here comes Tandi as well. So there's the mother. She's also here. So we've got the mother. We've got Hosanna coming in. Three leopards in the same place. Look at this. This is insane. Now Tandi's moving off. She's calling her cub. She's trying to get her cub to try and say, come, let's get out of here. There's too many leopards around. There's too much going on. And so she's trotting off. Hosanna is going to the base of the tree to try and see if he can find some food. This is insane now can you believe what is going on here this is ridiculous this is not something that you are going to see every day there's two big male leopards well one very big male leopard and one still growing leopard in one frame and tundi in the background somewhere off to the left you might be able to just see her moving so three leopards in one shot which is not what you see very often especially three adult leopards like what we're seeing now the cub has run off the cub would have run off in this commotion she's going to try and gotten somewhere safe i wouldn't even be surprised that that little cub is up in a tree somewhere just trying to stay out of the way of of this chaos but you can see Tingana's power he just ran in you see how that hyena immediately saw wait this is not a, a young leopard like the one I've been dealing with and that's why he's literally just kind of everyone let go and ran off Tingana's run in grabbed it and taken it and now what's interesting is that you see look Tingana's actually urinating so urinating from the tree is what he's doing so he's scent marking even from up there telling all of these leopards and hyenas this is his domain all of you back off you can see the dribbling coming down a little bit it's not easy to see kind of the background is difficult but there you can just kind of see it coming down a little bit so that's him telling everybody this is my carcass this is my area all of you back off and wow that went from 0 to 100 in about five seconds all of a sudden we were sitting here and there was no leopards on this carcass there was a little cub that was just watching from further away about a year old who wasn't a, kind of doing anything and, and all of a sudden hyena first then hosana then tingana and now mom is also running in the form of tandi this is just insane now for those of you who've never kind of joined us before and watching this chaos unfold i can is a very interesting situation what we actually have is a leopard kind of family tree here so the leopard right in the top of the tree he's the big guy in this area and the dominant male he's called tingana and he is quite an old male he's about 12 years old and he is the father of the leopard that is below him called hosana who is a male that is about two years and eight months and is still growing and still finding his feet at the moment dad is very tolerant of him but is still kind of you know figuring things out now the other leopard which is the female her name is tandi and she's the older sister of hosana so she's about 12 years old much the same age as tingana and she, they have the same mother hosana and tandi and tingana has fathered tandi's cub as well as hosana so it's a very complicated mix um it's all kind of linked together and the, they've all kind of sort of joined in this one area which is just insane Wow. Giselle, you're saying you're trying to find one word for the sighting, but it's too difficult. I know, it's just absolute pandemonium is what I would probably say for one word. It's insane to see what has just taken place. These are not things you get to see every single day. You'll you go a long time in, in, in life going through to the bush and, and visiting and being a guide before you'll see a sighting like what we've just witnessed. That amazing kind of rush in from these leopards. You can see, look at him, he's up there. Now, what's interesting is this is the second kill he's stolen today. Tingana stole Hosanna's kill this morning. So Hosanna had a different kill further away, about 150 meters away, and he stole that, and he's now stolen another kill from poor Hosanna. And so, you know, it's just a game of thievery at the moment, and it's been like this through the whole winter with these particular leopards. We've been seeing this regularly that they all kind of are thieving from one another and it's become all of a bit of a mess but anyway there goes Hosanna he see he's trying to see if maybe that carcass drops that he can grab some of it Tingana is trying to steadily put it back into the tree this is absolutely ridiculous wow
is all I can say. Now it's going to take a bit of time for everyone to settle. It will all settle down eventually. You will find that everyone will find the place that they want to be in and everyone will kind of relax a little bit, but it's going to take a bit of time. It's been a sudden kind of moment of complete chaos. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure having you guys on board. We're going to sign off for now. I hope that you enjoyed that moment of pandemonium and we'll hopefully see you all again on Safari Live. If you want to see what plays out, remember that you can can just google safari live and carry on watching us but from senzo and myself it's been an absolute pleasure we'll see you all soon well how was that that was absolutely insane we have just been witness to one of those very special moments in the bush and and this is part of what goes to what we were talking about earlier is that actually spending time watching an animal eat a carcass sometimes these are the things that kind of take place and interactions and behavior that we wouldn't have witnessed had we left that all alone so very very special to see what we've just seen Wow, I need to catch my breath. That was all a bit chaotic, to be honest. And so hopefully it kind of settles down a little bit. But it is that time, though, that we are going to be signing off. Remember, we are going to be coming to you again at 6.30 our time, or Central African time, where we kick off as a premiere on local South African television. So remember to tune in again in about half an hour's time. And hopefully the madness will be continuing at that stage. It's going to be certain he's lined up to be an action-packed evening. So from all of us that have been out this afternoon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully we'll see you all a little bit later. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow morning on the Sunrise Safari.